Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcast, Episode 34, DJI Mavic 3, coming in 2020. Got that coming up next. Last night, Marcus Crawford and I hosted Rotor Talk Live, and we discussed a number of subjects, including Marcus's experience at Spin Up 2019, um, stats regarding which manufacturer has the most drones registered with the FAA, drone delivery starting in Virginia. We started the countdown to the DJI Mavic Mini, and we discussed the DJI Mavic 3, what the possibilities are as far as it's being equipped and when it could be released. So without any further ado, we're going to play Rotor Talk Live in its entirety. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rotor Talk Live Season 2, Episode 43. How is everyone doing tonight? Welcome back. How are you, Marcus? Darn good. Uh, had a long flight yesterday coming home from Austin. Uh, glad to be home, but uh, boy, I uh, had a great time. And, uh, you know, I get to hang out with uh, Ron Brown. It was amazing. Well, aren't you? Uh, that that is that is the very first thing we're going to lead into. I have a I have a breaking news item that we're going to share here with everybody. So let me get let me get this lined up here because this this is absolutely totally I think something everybody wa wants to hear. This is total breaking news here. So This is Drone News International with a breaking news alert. It was reported today that Secret Talks held, held outside of Spin Up 2019 at the Spring Hill Suites in Austin, Texas, between President Ron Braun of Xeno Nation and co-president Marcus Crawford resulted in an agreement between the two parties. They will both retain the title of president and their terms will be for life. They revealed that one of the earliest members who was head of Xeno Nation's technical support Bill, the drone reviewer, was secretly given the title vice president at the time of the creation of Xeno Nation. Bill, the drone reviewer, was shared the reason he was not in Austin was that he and his wife will be visiting their granddaughter next month in Ohio. While this is true, the real reason was he stayed in Florida for line of succession purposes. President Brown said, quote, this is a great day for all Xeno Nation members. With the Xeno 2 arriving in 2020, we could not be more excited, end quote. President Crawford shared, the members of, of Xeno Nation are the real winners here today. We look forward to delivering more great content. Both presidents closed their announcement by saying, we would like to share something with all members and remind them what our vice president says. It's a great day to fly. Thank you. It is indeed a great day to fly. <laughs> I had that to is hilarious. That. I had to do that. It, it looked like the, the, I love the picture, and Valerie said the same thing. I said it looked like detente, like between, you know, like like when 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 Reagan was shaking Gorbachev's hand or something like that kind of a thing. Yeah, it was. Uh, so I got to I'll tell you the the story behind those pictures is we were just getting ready to to uh, part ways on uh, Sunday, I guess it was, and. Uh, of course, Sarah wanted to get pictures of everybody, so she carefully posed us by those uh, palm trees, and, and her and Susan took pictures. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and welcome everybody in the chat. Drone Master's here. Josh is here. Saigon98. Drone Fix is here. Oki Tom is here. Drone Shots. Lauren's here. Uh, Jimmy Perez is here. Colombo is here. Mark Emerson. Preston Jensen um air photography is here mike kenny is here my beautiful wife is here all right um marcus spin up 2019 let's hear let's hear a, a report on 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 your thoughts on it well <laughs> nothing short of amazing so uh yeah i mean obviously it was really cool to uh to meet ron brown in person and uh he's obviously the real deal but uh Gosh, I, I met so many people uh, that, you know, we we talked to online and so forth. And uh, I kind of I, I actually made a list, Bill. 
<laughs> uh, right. Well, you know, and, and, and I know I'm going to leave some people off here. And, and if I if I leave your name off, uh, I, I apologize. But I got to be honest with you, I was a little bit uh, overwhelmed all day long. So uh, Andy Overbeek, uh, we met. He made us some great videos with the uh, FT uh, Aviator. Check out his channel if you haven't. And of course, Art, Art Carlson with Art Code Drone Solutions. And Art won that uh, the, Robomaster. The, uh, the Robomaster. That was uh, amazing. Uh, Barry Markowitz, the journalist, uh, was there. The uh, photojournalist, it was just amazing. And, and Bill, I can't remember Bill's last name, but he was with Metro Drones, another really nice guy. Of course, I met uh, Chris Hope. Chris is just one cool dude. And I'll tell you, another just solid guy, and I'm, I'm wondering if he's in the chat here, uh, DeMarco Moore, FSU grad 03, was there, and we had a great time. <laughs> uh, we had some good conversations. Ed Ricker, of course, I got to meet Ed Ricker. Uh, James Messick, Old Goat MTB, got to meet him. And, of course, Jeff Sills with JAS Aerial. Uh, Jeff uh, is just the same guy that you that you see on the Internet. Good guy. Uh, Jenna C., uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't familiar with Jenna C. until meeting her at uh, Spin Up. Check out her channel, and her channel's name is Jenna C. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry Calvary is the guy that's behind the drone interest group that he is the, the the teacher that created the drone interest group a drone channel for his students and of course we all know kelly shores who who uh who put together uh spin up ready set drone and, and then uh ken dono original dobo it was uh, it was really cool meeting uh, ken in person uh and uh we had a fun time flying drones and he had a little incident if you'd like to see that, you need to look at his channel, Original Dobo. And of course, got to meet Ken Heron in person. And uh, he was raised some money. Uh, they had the uh, the little uh, spark that traveled around the world and auctioned it off uh, for for uh, charity. Uh, I actually bid 500 bucks on that thing and got outbid by uh, 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 I Am Wedge. I can't remember what he what the final bid was, but all that bid, the, the, all that money uh, went to uh, Make-A-Wish, which is a great organization. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, and got to meet uh, Mel Koch with uh, 400 AGL. Uh, and then uh, Mike Wright doesn't have a YouTube channel, but let me tell you what, he was a solid guy and a good flyer. Uh, Paul Davis, drone bum, <laughs> got to meet the drone bum. Uh, Rodney Bell, got to meet Rodney Bell, uh, just a solid guy. And of course, Ron Brown, I mentioned, Sean Oz was there. Sean Oz was a presenter. Uh, and then of course, uh, Steve Carpenter was there. Uh, and then, uh, Tom Ruby, who his channel is called Ten Toes. And, and the reason it's called Ten Toes, he was barefoot the whole time. He was out <laughs> flying his drone barefoot. And check out his channel. Ten Toes is the name of the channel. Uh, and then there was another fella, and I, I hope I, I probably messed this up, DIY Doc, and I, I can't remember your name. I'm sorry, but I wanted to acknowledge you. And so the presenters, Bill, we had, of course, Scott Parazinski at Fluidity Tech uh, was the first presenter. And, uh, man, did he really, uh, he, he, he is very smooth, and he wowed us. And, by the way, they have done some improvements to uh, the FT Aviator uh, that I think will probably help it. And then we heard from Dre Paskert. Uh, she runs a company called Time of Dre. And what she is, is a social media consultant. And uh, uh, yeah, I accidentally clicked on her link here. Just, uh, and I lost my spreadsheet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, hang on here. I got to get my spreadsheet back here. And then... Uh, and then we, uh, Jim McAndrew with DroneLink. Uh, so DroneLink is amazing. DroneLink is an automated system that you can, it's kind of, think of it as waypoints on steroids. So mm. check out DroneLink.com for more information there. But I, I guarantee you it's something I'm going to use. And then a gentleman that, I, that you know, uh, Bill, Barry Markowitz, photojournalist. Oh, yeah. Uh, is just, he just... He brought us to tears with some of his uh, stories uh, about some of the places that he's had to report. 
But he also talked about how a drone has really helped him in his journalism. And then we heard from uh, Jason Shepard at Remote Pilot 101. That was another really good uh, uh, presentation. And, and they have Remote Pilot 101, if you're not familiar, they do uh, uh, Part 107 training. And by the way, Bill, I think I'm going to sign up for that. It sounds like a pretty darn good oh, deal. Oh, it is. I can tell you it's the best out there, Marcus. I've heard that over and over again. Oh, it is. And then uh, we heard from Jace McCowan at, at a company called Skyways. And that was, man, it's just phenomenal. So, some of these people are, are just, it's just amazing the, the things that they can do. And it really humbles you to see what some people are doing out there. But he, they're, they're building a delivery drone and it's a fixed wing. So vertical takeoff and landing, fixed wing aircraft and he just won a contract with the navy and part of their deal will be to deliver uh uh material out to ships at sea in other words uh i guess sometimes there'll be a ship at sea that needs uh you know they forgot something and it it could be just a little thing some kind of medication or something like that they want to be able to get it out to them cheaply so that was part of what he was working working on and it was it was fascinating stuff and then, Bill, I'm going to need your help here. I cannot remember Philip's last name. Uh, uh, it's U L R I C H, I think. Ulrich. Ulrich. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that that's it. Yeah. So he he gave us a presentation. He was a fill in. There were actually some people that didn't show up, but he did give a good presentation on what it's like uh, living in an RV, which is what he's doing right now. So it was- Oh, he's a great guy. He's been on several of Kelly's videos. I like him. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. And then of course, every uh, a lot of us are subscribed to Sean Oz's channel, Sean Oz in Colorado. Oh, yeah. uh, he gave us a good presentation on, on how to edit an effective uh, YouTube video. And, and, it, and it was, you know, all good stuff and, and uh, uh, Man, everybody just had a great time, and it was it was fun meeting. It's just weird, you know. We we're all in our little world, and we're flying our drones and all that. But when you get to meet people from across the country, all in one spot, it, it's just a great feeling. And we went out to the ball fields at Walnut Park there uh, in Austin, and and flew our drones. and And I've never seen so many Mavics in the air at one time. <laughs> Uh, but, but it was just a riot. I've never flown with that many people before. It was really fun. Well, I'll tell you, you know, um, you know, the, the, all kidding aside, the real reason that we weren't there is next month we're, we're planning on uh, granddaughter Trump spin up. Uh, and I hate to say that, but I mean, that's, you know, as I've always said, and everybody knows on this channel, family comes first, you know, um, from my perspective, we were able to catch most of it on, on the live stream. Um, probably about, oh, you probably had about an hour or so left. Um, the live stream kind of like just froze and hung on us. So we didn't get to see Sean speak, but I like what Kelly's doing is he's taking the, and he's chopping the video up and he's putting segments out there of different speakers out on YouTube, which is fantastic. I really like that. I know he put Scott out there and I know there's another one out there and, um, I'm hopeful he's going to do the rest of them because it's just, it, he, he just did that. But from our end, it was fantastic. And, you know, some of the things for me that I really, I really, I mean, I love listening to Scott and we've had him on the show and, and he's just, he's a great, he's a great guest. Um, I absolutely, I, I want to try to get Barry on the show sometime because I'll tell you what, Barry's been in touch with me probably since the beginning of the year. And, and I knew you guys were going to be in for a treat with him because you know, we've exchanged um, some absolutely incredible emails together. He's actually got me some DJI swag from over in Hong Kong, a shirt that will only fit Valerie, but it has Chinese symbols and designs on it, but with DJI. Um, he's got some DJI bags, some other swag, but he has just been incredibly nice, uh, just a great supporter I know of my channel. I know he's, I know he's been in touch with Ken Dono as well, and he supports Ken's channel as well, as well as others. But his, his friendship has meant a lot to me personally. Um, he has been a great encourager. I can't say enough about the work that he does. Um, you know, it's very real. It's sometimes it's very painful for him. But a lot of the time, it's, he has a smile on his face when he's doing it because he really likes what he's doing. Um, 
And one of the great things I think is, is how people were, you know, uh, you know, Barry brought so much stuff to give away. And then hearing that Steve Carpenter generously donated those Amazon gift cards as well for people and all the swag that you guys got and the different cases that were given away, you know, people selflessly donating things just to make this a fun event. And, um, you know, it really warmed my heart to hear that art won the robo master. I thought that was just absolutely fantastic. Cause you know, and, and I'll tell you what, ever since I found art and, you know, we got him, you know, we, we had that fundraiser for him last year and got him his Mavic air you know, ever since then, you know, I've had a spot in my heart for him and you get to see how life is for him and it's not easy for him, but I'll tell you what, he went with all the gusto in the world. I watched his videos there. He was so excited, so happy. He's going to talk about this for the next year till spin up next year. So, um, Marcus, I am so glad that you guys went. Um, hey, Bill, can I add one more thing? You sure can. The, the 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 other thing that impressed me and uh and and i see demarco's in the in the chat here uh i i didn't see an ego in the place i mean you know there's a lot of those guys for instance like ed ricker that's got whatever one hundred forty thousand subscribers and stuff uh man i just felt like everybody was on equal footing in that uh, in that room there and uh and and that made it really fun too you know nobody was uh, afraid to talk to anybody it was all uh all just a, a great community. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, I wish, you know, we could bottle that community that you had there and, and, and replicate it out here as well. I, because I'll tell you what, you know, we all have the same thing in common. We all love drones. We all love to fly drones. And, you know, we all work hard on our content. And, and, I, and I think that that's what we need to remember because, you know what, life is precious and life is short. And you need to enjoy it. And okay, I'm off my soapbox now. Okay, we got a lot to go over tonight. We got a lot of topics here again. So the, we're just going to dive right into it. Now, um, we're gonna sh I'm going to share this article. And as you know, Sally French is a great friend of this channel. I've had her on twice. Um, had her on recently earlier this year. She is a joy and a treat to talk to anytime you can listen to her. She's fantastic. She has a fantastic blog every day. Um, I go to two sources every day to get my drone news. I go to her, her, her Twitter account, and I also and I go to Drone DJ, Hey Kestel. But this first article that I'm going to share with you um, brings up some real interesting um, facts here. And it's called New Data Proves What We Already Know. The DJI 2019 market share is giant, okay? Um, in case it wasn't already clear, the DJI... 2017 market share in the U.S. is giant. New data confirms basically what we already knew. Chinese drone manufacturer DJI has a 76.8 market share in the U.S. Now, the data is based on FAA drone registration numbers as of June 3rd, 2019, as analyzed by Drone Market Research and Data Group Drone Industry Insights. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll drop a link in the description for this so you guys can go ahead and check this. But I thought it's it's real interesting, Marcus, as we take a look here, you know, taking a look and see who's following up. Now, the, the Intel here is real interesting because um, the reason that they have this much of the market share, they're the ones that put on the events at night that use the use use the drones. So that's why they're up this high. But number three is kind of a real surprise. It's unique. OK. And, you know, again, you know, you're talking about you're going to, from 76 and then you drop down to 3.7. Unique has the 3.1, followed by Parrot. And then look at this. This is real surprising. The GoPro Karma, which is no longer being made, okay, 1.8% of the registrants, okay. The 3DR Solo, okay, uh, in the drone markets in 2009, 1.5%. Holly Stone um, out, of, out of Taiwan is 0.8%. And look what's behind Hollystone. Coming in at number eight is Autel Robotics, the X-Star Premium. Um, and then you go down to SenseFly and then Key Spry Drone from Menlo Park, USA. So, Marcus, what are your thoughts about, uh, about all this? This is real interesting data here. It is interesting because I would have picked Autel uh, as probably number three and Parrot as number two. Let me ask you, Bill. So this must be commercial drone registrations because... Uh, 
obviously when you're doing a hobby registration, you're not identifying what kind of drone you have. That's true. That's very, very true. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, but you know, the, the, the karma, you know, and the solo really weren't commercial, you know, um, probably what I'm guessing is, um, this registration probably was part one of uh, part one of sevens. Okay. And that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking. And yeah. these are probably drones that people had, and then they got their license and, and yeah. Yeah. And they still have the X star premium uh, listed with Autel. Okay. Which, right. uh, yeah, that's kind of a, but, but I just thought this was just incredibly interesting to see all this data up here and seeing drones that are no longer being made like the GoPro Karma and the 3DR Solo. I mean, you know, um, from what I heard, you know, except for the battery issue, the GoPro Karma was a great drone. And from what people tell me, the 3DR Solo was a great drone as well, too. That just, you know, companies ran into some problems financially and, you know, they stopped making them. Obviously, we know what the GoPro Karma's issue was. But, um, you know, all in all, this is just some real interesting data here that was given to us. Now, there's another article that I want to jump to. And again, it's by our good friend, Sally, okay? Now, this information just came out the other day, and it's about wing delivery. Now, wing is a division of Google, and uh, wing drone delivery brings Walgreens and FedEx goods to homes in Virginia. And um, obviously, I'm going to drop a link here in the article, um, and you can see what they do is these, these are um, vertical takeoff and landing drones, if you will. Uh, you know, they will hover over the spot and then they lower that via a cable down to the person, whatever, whatever the goods are. And you can see there's another picture down here of, of, a, of a box where it's at. And um, Walgreens is actually doing this as well, too. So, you know, Marcus, what are your thoughts about this? I mean, this is this is getting to become more more and more real as time goes on. It's coming. I mean, I, you know, we at, 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 at spin up. Uh, uh, we had a good presentation about about that from the, the company that was delivering the products uh, for the Navy. But I'll tell you, when you see the things that these companies are working on, uh, it's just a matter of time. And, and there's more to it than that. Uh, you know, there was even a discussion uh, with uh, Quad, uh, with uh, <laughs> I don't remember his name, uh, with Jason Shepard. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Talked to us about. Uh, drone deliveries and the potential for drone taxis. And, and, you know, one of the things that they said was, well, trying to get some, uh, an aircraft uh, set up for uh, human beings, getting it approved through the FAA is, is a huge task. But I think all that is coming. And of course, drone deliveries are gonna be the first thing. And with the kind of automation that's coming and AI that's coming, Kind of like we see with the Skydio. I mean, it's just not too much of a reach to be able to believe that uh, that, that this thing is. You know, they'll 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 separate the uh, the air corridors uh, so that you know deliveries are at, at one altitude and and airplanes are at another and all of that. So it's 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 a happening deal, and you know we're just starting to see the very beginnings of it in the news now. I mean, that's exciting what you shared about the gentleman that. Um company is going to be making deliveries for the Navy. I mean, that really, I mean, to get a contract with the government that, you know, it takes a lot to do something like that and you've got to impress them. And obviously he, he did that. I mean, that takes an awful lot. So I would, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that Kelly's going to put that out there because there were parts of the afternoon presentation that I didn't get in morning. So um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. Now, this is something we're going to talk about, which is really, this is like absolutely no surprise. Anybody who's watched the channel knows this. And especially Marcus is going to bring up his handy dandy spreadsheet right now and share that. Okay. Um, you know, several sites are reporting that the spark is no longer on DJI's website. And I'm like, okay, this is like the, the, when you would hear the Valley girl go, duh, you know, kind of a thing. I mean, this is something we've been talking about ad nauseum for like, forever okay i mean this is just something you know we we were just you know this is we, we just kept talking about this well this is this it's actually come to fruition um marcus yeah you want me to throw up my spreadsheet yes please do okay let me, let me get her uh set up here 
Let me know when you can see it, Bill. We can see it, Marcus. All so, right. you know, what's uh, what's always striking is the amount of red there is instead of green. But the, <laughs> who was the guy that reported that, Bill? I, I don't remember. We reported that the spark was no longer on the website. Well, I, I think you and I reported that a month ago or a month and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, I, I, that's why I'm laughing about it. Yeah. However, uh, the the other thing that is that is interesting about the spark is that while it is still listed on the refurb part of the web page, uh, they're not available. There's, they ha and they haven't been for weeks and weeks. Uh, so it looks like the spark. Uh, I, I can't believe uh, that they haven't uh, sent out an, an EOL on that one yet, but uh, but I'm sure it's forthcoming because. Uh, you know, they're just, Mike, they're just not yeah, there. Anymore. Mike, that's a good point, Marcus, because it's been like probably well over a year since there's any been, you know, I don't know because I don't have it, but um, you know, what I'm hearing is it's been like well over a year since there's been any kind of firmware updates on the Spark. I mean, you know, they yeah, really other than the Go4 app. Yeah. yeah, other than the Go4 app. I mean, yeah. they really haven't done um done a lot with that so i mean but yeah this spreadsheet's not a surprise oh and i gotta share this with you marcus it was funny i was out looking you know how at the ads pop up and there was a bang good ad that popped up on on facebook so i'm just running through and looking at all the drones of course they have the xeno out there and the the xeno pro and just just going through them and then they had the mavic 2 pro now this is from Banggood. okay you want to hear the price that was listed on Banggood site? For was the, it crazy? It was two thousand three hundred and thirty-five. Holy cow! They, they they know what they got. <laughs> uh, probably been in their stock for a year and a half. So talking about the Phantom, I I'll tell you, Bill. Other than commercial applications, I I'm sure uh, we're we we're probably seeing we're getting close to the end of the Phantom line of drones uh, from. Some of the rumors we're hearing. The other, I want to mention one more thing about the Spark, though, if because I don't want to discourage people. If they, I'm sure that it's available new for some from some resellers, and that is just an awesome little drone. So you know, just because you can't buy it direct from DJI, I would not be afraid to buy one there. It's an amazing little product. Uh, the 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 Mavic Air still has life in it. You know, you can get the new ones uh, on the website right now, although they're pricey. You. The Fly More Combo, $1,149. And Bill, I think when I bought my Mavic Air new, I, I don't have it anymore, but when I bought one when they first came out, and gosh, I think I paid $700 for it or something. Mm -hmm. Something like that. I mean, it was not, uh, it was pretty reasonable and not so much anymore. Now, the other interesting thing that I think is that the Mavic Pro uh, still has a little bit of life in it. The Mavic Pro Platinum is still available brand new in the fly more combo wow. now they're again about like that uh that uh phantom that you're talking about bill you better take a big gulp because you're going to pay 1500 bucks for it uh but it, it's there if if uh, somebody wants it and then of course the mavic 2 soldiers on uh the the zoom interestingly enough you can't get it with the goggles and you can't get it with the smart controller new but you can buy it new and you can buy it as a refurb the Mavic 2 Pro, which I think is kind of the premier drone that DJI makes right now, is uh, widely available, uh, except for you cannot, uh, you can't get it as a refurb right now. And the reason for that, I suspect, is they sell everyone that they get in stock. I'm yeah, that sure. one, that one comes in, it's gone, that kind of a thing. And right, you know, and, right. and Lauren brought up in chat, and this is like he's, this is a perfect segue. To the next thing we're going to talk about here before we talk about there's there i want to i want to talk about some rules overseas here but the the mavic mini and you know it's you know this it is definitely the spark successor okay there's just absolutely no doubt about that and then what the countdown's on um it's next wednesday my guess is 9 a.m they're going to do a soft release like dji has been famous doing before uh, and you know it it and i expect at 901 both marcus and i and ron will get our confirmation numbers that our mavic minis have shipped maybe two maybe two <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but you know, uh, yeah. you know, and you know, and I have to thank, I have to thank Lauren. He's he's been a big help here. But um, you know, he really has. Lauren gets a lot of credit. Yeah. He has given us some great information. He sure has. Yeah. Um, G Boy One Eighty Five's in the house. Thank you for showing up tonight, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Um, saw your new things on. I'm gonna watch your video later on the um, the Hard Rock Casino opening. Um, anyway, <laughs> but. You know, with the Mavic Mini, it's going to, you know, and I can't understate this enough. I put it out on Build a Drone Reviewer Limited Edition. The four reasons why you should consider buying this drone. You know, obviously, you know, being under the 250 grams, you know, here, you know, you avoid the $5 registration fee. But overseas, like up in Canada and the UK, you know, that means you not only do you not have to register it, you don't have to get a certificate to fly it, which... I think is just, I mean, you know, it eliminates a lot of red tape. Um, and that's why this thing is absolutely, Marcus, it's going to fly off the shelves. It really will. Listen, if, if you really, it's another one of those drones that I think if you want one, you better be ready and waiting that first day and, and hit that button. And not that you probably won't be able to get one later on, but, but you're going to wait. And so if you want one mm -hmm. fairly quickly, be, be ready to hit that button. And if it's for, if it's three ninety nine, uh, you know, like Lauren is telling us, Holy cow. I mean, like you said, it'll be like hotcakes. It will. And, and, you know, and, and I think one of the other things I think people need to remember too, with this is, you know, a lot of it say a lot of people that looked at it, look at it. And, and I tell them, I said, you're looking at a prototype. You're not looking at a finished product from those pictures that you saw. And, and num number two, you know, this is not a toy drone here, folks. Okay. This is not a um, something from Banggood or Holly Stone or, you know, or our good friends at JJRC. Okay. This is from DJI. Okay. And this is something that's going to be backed up by a fantastic warranty. And it's going to have, it's going to have 4K, 30 frames per second. It's going to have OcuSync on it. It's going to have about a 15, you know, 16 minute runtime on it. Um, you know, it's going to be compact so you can, you know, if I wanted to put it in my briefcase at work and then go outside at lunchtime and fly, I can do that. It's going to have a remote for three ninety nine. How can you beat that? You know, seriously. Well, so we, and I think we had this discussion before, but, but the, the thing that I keep thinking of is, you know, they're going to have to sell my beloved Hub, Hubson Zeno for 150 bucks because no, nobody will buy it for 399 when you can get the Mavic Mini. Uh, <laughs> it, it's it's definitely going to affect the market. But 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 what we predicted a long time ago was that uh, DJI would not leave that lower price market alone. They're not they were they're just not going to seed that out to to some of these other uh, manufacturers that have been coming up with some some better products now. So uh, yeah, it's it's fun to see. Uh, uh, DJI uh, come out swinging on that one. Well, Chris is in the house. Chris Hope is in the house. Chris, um, thank you for joining tonight. And I'm going to be there next year. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing you there. Now, Lauren also tells us too that the gimbal is very similar to the gimbal on the Osmo Pocket. So that's going to be very interesting to see that. The gimbal on the, on the Mavic Mini. That's going to be real interesting to see that. Now, I'm expecting... Um, you know, DJI, and one thing I will say, because I, I did get, I did field a couple of questions regarding availability as far, as far as shipping. DJI has learned their lesson in a very painful way when they re released the original Mavic Pro in 2016 and the pain points that have caused a lot of people waiting from October to January to get that. So you can, you can, you can rest assured that with the distribution centers that they have here in the United States, especially that your product's going to get to you pretty doggone quickly. I, I would say, well, when I ordered my Mavic 2 Pro, Marcus, I ordered it the day it came out when I was at the event, and I got it seven days later, shipped. It was at my door. Yeah, it was the same thing with me with the Zoom. I'm, I'm telling you, Bill, I think I might have even got it in five days. I mean, it was really fast. I, I was just so impressed. And you know what? It never fails, okay? The day that I got it, it's one of those days – it's just pouring down rain. It's like monsoon type rain all day long here. Okay. And then when you know it, I got a break, went outside, took it out there. And then, oops, it doesn't have precision landing. Valerie's looking like it's going to land on the roof, sweetheart. <laughs> and that's when we find out the whole thing 
it didn't have precision landing after that. So that was yeah. a real, that was, that was a lot of fun. But anyway, that's they coming took care up. of that though, didn't they? I oh mean, yeah. So, they sure... so when we flew on Sunday out there at spin up, I, I, I purposely, it was in a baseball field and I purposely took off from where they had painted a white stripe on the, on the ground there. And that son of a gun landed both times right smack dab on that white stripe where it took off. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Wow. All right, we're going to switch gears just a little bit here. Now, there was an article on Drone DJ, and it's called New Drone Registration and Education Service in the UK. Now, I'm sure my friend Ian Tickner, uh, Tickner, I'm sorry, Ian, I probably, I am totally botching your name. And I apologize for that. Let me go ahead and share the screen here. Um, you know, and from what I'm hearing with this is that this system here is a lot like the system up in Canada. Um, on their website today, the, um, the CIA announces new drone and model aircraft registration and education service. It'll come into effect in law on November 30th, 2019 in the UK. Any drone pilot or operator flying a drone between 250 grams and 20 kilograms will need to register as an operator. The registration will need to be renewed every year for a cost of nine pounds or almost 12 US dollars. Um, you know, and I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw um, you know, a, a link to the article in this description. So for holders of current CAA permissions or exemptions for drone operations um, and model flyers holding achievement certificate issued by UK Model Aircraft Association, CAA, okay. Uh, remote pilots fly in accordance with permission, exemption, or operational authorization that has been issued to a named UAS operator by the CAA will be exempt from having to take the online education training and test. Okay, there's a lot, a lot of information here, but basically, a lot of this, uh, from from my understanding, from what several people had told me, is that this is this these kind of rules. Um, you know, and I know Lauren had mentioned this to me as well. Are, are going to he head to the United States. Marcus, what do you think about that? I mean, you know, having some, having some addition, these rules like this? Well, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So I know that there's some talk about uh, having to take a, even hobbyist, having to take a, a, a drone test. I, I'm not against it. Uh, you know, 3X Drones just brought up that he's concerned about, uh, you know, people buying the, the little Mavic Mini that... Uh, don't, really don't know, nor do they care about the rules and and creating a problem for a hobby, which I think is legit. So, uh, you know, to me, gosh, it's it's like anything else, driving a car or whatever. I don't I don't mind jumping through a few hoops to make it safe for everybody. That's me. I know other people have different views, but honestly, it does I don't mind it. Well, you know, I, I know that uh, one of the things that you're going to find out here is you know that. Um, there, the FAA is currently working on an exam for hobbyists here in the United States. Uh, I know there was, they had had, uh, they had asked for input earlier in the year about that, about what you thought, what might be relative, important, and so forth on this. And uh, there's nothing yet on that, but I, that's going to be forthcoming. So it's, and, and my thinking is, it's going to be um, along the lines of, Remember that DJI had put out those questions that you had to answer before on the DJI Go 4 app before you would fly. I think it's going to be along those lines. I think they're, it's going to be super straightforward, super easy. I mean, really, it's not going to be that difficult. Yeah, so uh, along those lines, my next door neighbor is a 737 pilot for Southwest Airlines. And, and I was out mowing the lawn the other day talking to him and I was explaining to him about uh, the part 107 and some of the questions on it. And he was stunned that you would have to learn to read sectional charts on the part 107. He goes, he goes, what, what, why in the world do you guys, you just need to know whether you can fly there or not. I mean, what, you know, anyway, it was interesting. And, and the weather charts and so forth, uh, he was uh, kind of amazed at all that. And, and it was kind of interesting getting a pilot's perspective too. He, he doesn't even think about drones. He goes, you know, the only time a drone is going to bother me is he goes on final approach. He goes, just when we're coming in for, for landing, he goes, gosh, maybe within, you know, 500 yards of the, of the, uh, of the airport. He goes, other than that, you know, so it was just kind of an interesting to hear his perspective. 
Well, Mike Roach uh, just commented here. So far, the FAA has been quite reasonable. And then Lauren followed up with a great, equally as great comment. Um, those that are serious will do the testing, et cetera. Those that would break the law would do so, test or no test. And um, both gentlemen, both your comments are spot on. I, I could not agree more. Um, you know, L- Lauren's right. You know, you know, for example, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll, give, I'll give you a good example here. Um, last year, you know, both um, Ken Dono and Billy Kyle, um, they got to take the Part 107 after being encouraged to do so. And it's made a huge difference for them. I mean, Ken has a incredible business now because of that. And he does right. fantastic at that. And if you ever get a chance, watch some of his videos that he's done uh, for real estate. It just will blow you away, not only on the outside, but on the inside. The guy has some incredible, Ken, you have some mad skills. Uh, that's all I got to say. And Billy, too. Billy's done some fantastic work. Um, you know, he's very much into drone mapping. And, um, you know, if he basically said, you know, if he can afford like a, an RTK, he'd buy an RTK because it, it's incredible with the drone mapping abilities. But, you know, I think I think it's something that is it, you know, in, in taking the test. One of the things that I can say, and after having talked with some private pilots and taking the exam, you know, a lot of that is a lot of the questions on the part 107, whether it's the recurrent or the or the original exam you'll find on the private pilots exam. Okay. I, I, I can tell you that from talking to multiple private pilots, that's what they've told me, you know, and, and I understand, you know, and, and while I understand that, I think a lot of the questions will never, I think questions on airspace are fantastic. However, I think questions on, you know, um, th- there are just some other questions there that really aren't relevant that, I think they could do they could do better on okay because I think they they take a lot probably from the private pilots exam and just slap it into the part 107 exam. So I'm really thinking they could do a better job at that. I really do. Um, yeah, G Boy 185. I'm seriously concerned getting into drone mapping down here in South Florida. I'm telling you, my friend, it will you know um, you know you get your part 107, you do that, and you set up a business right you will you'll be raking in some great money um with that i can tell you that right now um we'll see what's what what can hit it right where, where he's at because down here in florida and um i want to give a shout out to don carson a friend of mine from up in pittsburgh he's good friends with ken dono um he recently was in town on business here and met valerie and i for dinner very graciously took us out to dinner that night and i want to thank you again for that don um but he's starting a drone business up in Pittsburgh. And what's real interesting is the market up in Pittsburgh is wide open up there. Okay. They don't, he doesn't have the competition that you have down here for every person that say would advertise that they would need a roof inspection down here. You probably have 150 people bid for it and, you know, underbid and undercut and everything. And I think Ken talked about that when he first got into that and he said it was just crazy trying to do that. So he got himself established and he, and, he, and he got himself a good niche where it's not only, you know, doing the drone photography, it's doing interior photography as well. And that's where I think he's reaping a lot of benefits because a lot of, the, a lot of them that offer real estate drone photography, it's only from the outside. They don't even consider the inside. And he does both of them and he does exceptional work with that. So, all right, we're going to move on to our main topic of discussion here, Okay. Now, I'm not going to be happy. There's really not a lot of information and details that we're going to have to present to you. This is more, you know, talking kind of like theory, so to speak, that we're going to be talking about the Mavic 3. And from everything that we're hearing here, now, this is an article that was on Drone DJ, um, you know, and, you know, they mentioned a couple of things in here, having Active Track 3.0. Um, to stay in competition, obviously, with the Skydio. And they're also talking about, well, you know, it's not going to have OcuSync 3.0. It's going to have OcuSync 2.0. And the other thing is um, the video quality will be at least on par, but likely better than what you get from the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. Um, Marcus, and and one of the other things that I've heard, and I did some reading today, is that they said that an initial price point on this is about twelve hundred dollars, which I'm kind of laughing at because 
you know, you look at the uh, real base price for like the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and it's $1,450. So what are your thoughts about this? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be hitting that button if it's 1200 bucks, Bill, I can assure you that. But uh, they definitely, the, the Skydio, no question, I'm, I'm willing to bet, has created a little bit of a stir over at DJI, which is good for all of us, right? I mean, you just showed the market share that they have, and uh, we looked at the prices of their drones, so it, it, will, it will only help our business. But if you can get that Hasselblad camera with an optical zoom on there, holy guacamole, that would really be cool. And, you know, I'm not kidding. I, I definitely would, would hit the button on that as, you know, as long as it wasn't something dumb like 3,000 bucks. The other thing that I want to touch on, Bill, is with regard to uh, obstacle avoidance and A-pass, you saw the little test that I did the other day with my uh, Mavic 2 right. uh, going around trees and so forth. Uh, and, and, the, and the Mavic 2 is is capable, right? I mean, it can it can do that sort of thing, but you can't expect it to do the things that, that, that we're seeing with the Skydio. It's just not designed to do that. It's not going to do that. It's, it's more of a photography uh, video drone rather than an action sports drone. But you still have to believe that, uh, that DJI is going to start looking at that. And they don't want to leave any stone unturned or any market left out there. So I, 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 if, if not uh, a, a new version of Active Track, I, I would say that we would see definitely some software tweaks and and with a pass maybe because let's face it that is a lot of that is uh is artificial intelligence that does that so if they put a bigger processor in there maybe the current stuff that they have now will work a little better so anyway well lauren's telling us that it's going to have a new processor which will improve both the pictures and the video which um there there there's that answer right there and um Mike Kenny, want to answer, uh, I hope Terrace will be over soon. Well, Lauren reported that um, the prices that we'll be getting on the Mavic Mini will not have tariffs on them. So um, that's that's a Christmas present for us. Um, Man, no kidding. And, and did you see the price he quoted, uh, Bill? Yeah. 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 That, that's going to be great. If it's I, that, I'll buy three. <laughs> I hear you. And, you know, and, and i tell you what, what DJ is probably going to do this time around, you know, there was talk that there was only going to be back last August when the Mavic 2 was released. There was only going to be one model. It was going to be the Pro, okay? There was no Zoom, okay? And the whole reason that they went ahead and they slapped that camera on there was because of the Anafi, all right? Because you're, if you remember, exactly a month before that happened, and the reason, the whole reason the Mavic 2 got delayed was not for, for shortages, part shortages or anything. It was because they quickly scrambled and they found they put in a zoom camera on it because they wanted it to have the zoom capabilities. So that's what they did. And that's why that's why they have the zoom camera here with the Mavic three. You're not going to see a zoom and a pro. You're just have a pro model with this. OK, uh, it was just going to be one model. And if they could come in at a price point of twelve hundred dollars for this, that and have a camera on par or better than the Phantom four pro, say with a mechanical shutter on it. Wow. OK portability through the roof here okay portability is the is i think the big deal right now and you know just just like you bill i was always a big fan of the phantom right and it, it just felt like a big boy drone and stuff but you but you can just see how the market has changed and and it, the market really just demands portability now yeah it does it does and i and, and uh lauren is making a clarification there oh, about yes. i'm not sure what that is uh, yeah uh, thank you marcus he said if you buy from my link you will not have to pay tariffs lauren um go to build a drone reviewer um facebook group and facebook page because lauren has dropped links to where he works for and you'll be able to buy it from his link you won't have to pay any tariffs for it lauren thank you for clarifying that i'm sorry about that but i wanted to make sure that i got that out there for everybody um metro drones welcome thanks for showing up that's bro. that's bill for metro drones and bill i didn't get your last name darn it <laughs> metro drones thank you for for showing up tonight appreciate that i got paid and by the way um you know our good friend ron brown is vacationing right now he was 
Last we knew he was in San Antonio, but I'm thinking he was probably heading over to China Grove to see if the Doobie Brothers were there. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, he tried to get on tonight from his iPhone, um, but the Zoom meeting wouldn't let him in. I told him, I said, if he had an iPad, it would have worked because I actually I've gone in on Zoom meetings through iPads before. So um, so 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 that's the deal on that. So, you know, that's something exciting. I mean, here we are at the end of 2019. OK, we have the Mavic Mini coming up and then right on the heels for that. I'm sure we're going to be getting emails right around the first week of November saying, you know, please finish your deposit on your uh, Skydio 2 and we'll send it to you kind of thing. Um, you know, that's coming up. We got the Zeno two coming up probably maybe end of the year, maybe beginning of next year. We probably, we will have the Mavic three probably end of January or so. So, um, Marcus, all I got to say is I hope your investments will be doing well. the next. Few months. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I I've been actually selling some stuff, some of the older stuff off in order to fund some of the new things. So, uh, yeah, it, I, I, listen, this is all really great fun. And, you know, it was kind of a weird year, but now all of a sudden it's, it's hitting, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, you know, I just remember not long ago, Bill, you and I and Ron were discussing, okay, what's the next, how are they going to improve on the Mavic 2? Well, hey, now we're seeing it. Look at that Skydio. I mean, Seeing is believing. I can't wait till we get our hands on one. Uh, and the same goes for this Mavic Mini. The the Spark for me, I, I never really understood the Spark until I owned one. And uh, the 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 goodness of the Spark was how easy it was to carry around, how easy it is to travel with, how easy it was to deploy, and and it plus it had all of those good things that every DJI product has, great video, et cetera. If this Mavic Mini can do that only better with 4K video and in even a smaller package, man, that, to me, that's just astounding. Yeah, you know, the, the portability factor, uh, 4K, 30 frames per second, um, 18 minutes of runtime, OcuSync instead of Wi-Fi. I mean, I mean what... You know, there's reasons uh, through the roof on this. And then, you know, Lauren told us about, you know, the gimbal uh, looking like the Osmo Pockets gimbal. And I'm like, because I'm impressed with that Osmo Pockets gimbal. I mean, this is just this is just something for me that's absolutely going to fly through the roof. I mean, I, I think this is going to put, you know, everybody's going to their first thought around this time of the year. And see, and, and see, here's where here's where DJI has an advantage over Skydio. And, and I'm just going to uh, like, like this. And, and I know Scotty O nation don't, don't be coming down on me for this, but you know, <laughs> Scotty O's, you know, they have, they've sold out two, if not three of their first production runs, which are fantastic. And, and I'm so thrilled for them, you know, and, and I'm hoping that what's going to happen from this, they'll be able to build up enough capital to be able to, to, to crank out more drones like DJI can crank out drones and then, you know, they'll probably slowly but surely make an inroad into some of these sales, that sales figures that we saw earlier here, that 76% that DJI has, they may be able to climb up to maybe, you know, like a number two position if they do things right. That's what I'm thinking. You, you have to know that, that that day that they introduced that Skydio and that first batch sold out in, I don't know, three or four hours, Bill. It was something, it didn't take very long. Yeah. And, and that, that they probably had a board meeting that night looking for production facilities and trying to figure out how to automate their processes so they could get production going. Because I think you're absolutely spot on. That may very well be their Achilles heel at this point. But what we do know is there's also enough angel investors behind them that when they can show the sales, they'll get the funding. No problem. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Marcus, I couldn't yep. agree more. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll be, you know, be, banks will be lining up and other investors will be lining up to do it when they see how well this is. And, and I actually, I got a comment from the gentleman that put out the video. Um, oh, um, the one where it was the video that uses the controller with Skydio too. Okay. He actually commented on one of my Skydio videos, okay? 
um, which was real interesting. I, I'm and and I've been I've been trying to have some dialogue with him, but I don't know if he's he's busy or not. But you know, he's saying the controller really makes a makes this a real drone. I mean, you know, it's just not an autonomous drone. It makes it a real drone because I think that was the thing with Skydio's first go around. I mean, having an autonomous drone was great. The price tag probably turned a lot of people off. But I think the real big thing that turned people off was, you know, you didn't control it. I mean, it was all autonomous. You had no, no, no say where it goes to. We're here, you know, let's call, call it like it is. Both you and I, and I know I'm probably speak for Ron as well. You know, we want to have control sticks on our hands. We want to, you know, you know, the beacon's nice, but I tell you what, having that control stick in your hand is priceless. Oh, no, no question about it. So I don't know about, you, you know, the first thing I thought about, well, they did that video where they were in the warehouse and, you know, they backed the drone out of the warehouse. Uh, have you seen that guy from the Netherlands that does those amazing backup videos where he'll, he'll back a drone through a house and through the trees and so mm -hmm. forth? The first thing I thought of is, boy, I can't wait to get a hold of that Skydio with the controller and, you know, try and attempt to do one of those videos. And, hey, you don't have to worry about crashing the darn thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Marcus, closing thoughts for tonight. Uh, well, Philly Drone Life's in the house. That's, yes, I saw him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, so, uh, man, i I, I got to be honest with you, Bill. I'm still on a little bit of a high after uh, spin up. I, you know, you've been before you were there last year. It just, you just, it's hard. It's tough to put in to words how much fun it is to be around uh, a bunch of like-minded uh, uh, individuals. It, uh, it was really fun. And, and like I said, I didn't see a single ego in the house. Everybody was just spot on and everybody was just having a great time. Well, you know, and, and, and I have to say this, you know, I'm so glad that you got a chance to meet Ron and, and, and I'll say this, you know, Marcus and I were talking before the show tonight, you know, Marcus said, Ron Brown is the real deal. What you see on videos, what you see on Xeno nation is what is the real deal. Ron is one of the most genuinely sincere and nicest people you will ever want to run into. I can't say enough about him. I absolutely, Valerie and I enjoyed spending time with he and his wife. We had so much fun. Um, and I told him, I said, I said, you're not going back to New Jersey, are you? You're just going to stay here at the beach and I'm going to come down and visit you every three or four days. And we're going to go flying. He had a big laugh with that one. Okay. But, you know, having that opportunity to do that with him is fantastic. And, and I think, I think Marcus, when, you come down to it with, with, you know, going to a wonderful event like this. Okay. The presenters are fantastic. You heard some great speakers there. You picked up a lot of great information, but you know what? And I think you'll agree with me. The best part about it is meeting people. That is, that is exactly right. Yeah. You know, that is exactly right. And, and, and I, and I want to say this too, and Kelly Shores, if you're watching, I have to, you know, my hat is off to you. I know you and I know Phil and, you know, people involved with you. And I think your wife was involved. Well, a lot of hard work and a lot of effort was, was put into this. Kudos to you for that, Kelly. I mean, you know, this is, this has been an undertaking for you and, and, and I, I, my, my hat's off to you and here's to a successful one in 2020 next year. And here's to one where I am setting aside funds already for this. <laughs> and we are going to get, we are going to go next year, which I'm so looking forward to. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, you know, in, in seeing things like for me personally, hearing that art won something th that just absolutely warmed my heart, like nothing else. I was so happy to hear that. These is just some highlights for me as well. Hearing Barry Markowitz speak. Like I said earlier, Barry's just one of the most genuinely sincere, nicest, real people on this earth who loves drones. Um, he loves what we do. He says, I can, he said, Bill, he says, I can never do what you and like Ken Dono do. He says, I can never do that. He says, you guys do exceptional work with that. He said, he said, keep doing your research. Keep, keep up the good fight. He said, you guys do fantastic. You get out great information to us. Keep that up. You do fantastic at that. Um, you know, and, and hearing things like, more, you know, how um, Barry gave um, so much stuff 
um, how Steve Carpenter, you know, donated gift cards from Amazon, which I thought is absolutely fantastic of you, Steve. Kudos to you for that. Um, you know, everything that's involved with that. You know, I, you know, I'm on my soapbox about this, but I can't say enough about what Kelly's done. I can't say enough about everybody who's contributed. And thanks to DJI for contributing, you know, the Mavic 2 Pro and for the RoboMaster. Um, and I know they had some other corporate sponsors there as well, too. Um, you know, just, just an absolute total, total win for everybody. And, um, you know, if you get a chance, I know Ron has a video on, on Xeno nation. Um, I did see a great video on orig original Dobo Candano put one out. Please go watch those. Those are absolutely fantastic videos that I've seen. Um, you know, it, 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 it was a good thing. I hope you guys enjoyed everything we talked about tonight. There's a lot of great things coming up and, you know, um, we're, we're in the home stretch of the year here and there's so much excitement. Um, the countdown's on for the Mavic mini October 30th is coming up. Um, you know, be sure to watch here because Wednesdays is a day that I work from home and we're going to, I'm going to have the two presidents of Xeno nation on, and we're going to do a recap of the Mavic mini that day. Uh, probably just a 15 thing minute thing about around noon that day. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, 12 days of Christmas is coming up. And we're going to have a blast with that here. So you guys want to be prepared for that. Uh, it, we're going to have a lot of fun. Like a lot of people are going to get a lot of good stuff. So with everything said, Marcus, thank you again for a great evening. Ron, we miss you. We look forward to you rejoining us shortly. Enjoy the rest of your vacation and safe travels back home. Um, and as always, remember, everyone, it's a great day to fly. Take care, everybody.